start. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. You will rejoice. We will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it because God is good and he's always going to be good and he's good all the time and he's good every day and he's good when you're up and he's good when you're down and he's good when you don't know what's going on with you. God is good. So go ahead and set your attitude for that today. Declare it right now in the name of Jesus. God is good today. Hallelujah. And uh, man, I'm, I'm just so excited about being here with you today. I love me some world changes. Hey man, we are establishing a serious bond and relationship. And um, I tell you, I'm, I'm just so excited about meeting you every morning right here in our time of, of uh, confessions. Praise God. We believe, we believe God. Amen. So blessings to all of you this morning. I'll spend a couple of minutes just welcoming you here today. We Thank God so much for Jacqueline Bryant, the blessings of God to your house and uh, 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 Julia Carver. We bless you today. Send blessings to your house. Uh, some of you, it's it's uh, evening time where you are. And so good evening. Praise God. Blessings from those of you who are in Baltimore and Chicago. God bless you. Uh, bonjour, monsieur. God bless you from uh, the Philippines. Praise God from Tennessee. Uh, uh, God bless you guys so much. Uh, Sandra Allen, God bless you today. Praise the Lord. Ralph Oliver, God bless you, man. Praise God. Hallelujah. Blessings to your house. And I'll say this as well. God is perfecting everything that concerns us. God is perfecting everything that concerns us. Good morning, Sherry Peppermint. Good morning, Eddie Burrell. Good morning, C. Thomas. God bless you. We welcome you in our time of confessing the word. And, and if any of you, if this is your first time with us, you know, it's it's pretty simple. We believe God and, and we we trigger our faith with the confessions of our mouth. And uh, we believe all is well. God is perfecting everything that concerns you. Uh, and today we're going to talk about how to be free from those wrong attitudes. So set your attitude. I mean, you might not feel it right now, but just kind of like, you know what? I'm going to have a good day today. And and most likely if you if you begin to declare uh, your day and declare and set your attitude, then how you feel right now, line up with it and it'll begin to change. And uh, man, I, I, I sure love you. You know what we can, uh, I've come to find out that when you walk in real love, you can, you can disagree agreeably. You don't have to disagree and get mad and withdraw and I ain't never going to call you no more. And I ain't got nothing else to do with you no more. And oh man, it's, it's uh, not saying very much for grace. It's not saying very much for our, maturity. That's probably a very immature thing to do. But um, I'm just thanking God that uh, we're living in a time where we can have conversations and we can disagree agreeably and we can walk away from the table and still love each other, go out and get a hamburger and praise the Lord with, with each other. Got to make sure the devil doesn't take advantage of, of disagreements and then turn it into strife and then it goes from strife to hatred. And then you find out that you don't like a person and it all it goes all the way back to a, to a disagreement. Yeah, the Bible does say, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? Yeah, I understand that. But this is about, you know, can I can I express myself? Can I become vulnerable? I think we need to provide as Christians a safe place for people to become vulnerable. So you don't have to just say what everybody else is saying. You can say, well, here's just what I feel about it. And, you know, I hope we can be friends after I say what I'm going to say. Um, and I, I just think that's so valuable to our growth. It's it's valuable to our maturity uh, that you're not always talking to somebody that agrees exactly with what you're saying. Um, 
And I think we find common ground when we go into the word of God and we find out, well, what does the word have to say? Because at the end of the day, we're born again Christians and the the tiebreaker is going to be what the word has to say. And yet even today, you can go to the word and one guy sees it from this perspective. Another guy sees it from that perspective. Somebody says, what's the tiebreaker then? The Holy Spirit. It's just we're going to, to talk to the Holy Ghost and let every man be convinced in his own way. And and we respect what people what people do and what they believe God told them to do. I think we are way past the place of shaming people when they don't agree with us. Uh, that's a sign of immaturity when you have to shame somebody because they don't, uh, you know, uh, think the same way that you think about a subject. That's that's immaturity. It just means that you have to grow some more. It doesn't mean that the person's a bad person. It just means you got to grow some more. When you begin to evaluate all of this through the eyes of love, you know, you're, you're still working to try to maintain a loving, kind relationship, uh, a, a relationship of love, a relationship of cooperation. But um, confrontation will bring bring about growth. I believe confrontation doesn't have to be negative, uh, but it'll bring about growth for the person that's being confronted and the person that's doing the confrontation. And I have had um, conversations where I walked away from the conversations and I kind of reevaluated something that I thought I agreed with. And I heard something and I'm like, OK, well, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to look at that just a little bit more. And what happens is it gave me a better balance uh, than what I had before because I was willing to listen. And so I think the most powerful position you can be in, especially if you're a leader, but as a person, the most powerful position you can be in is a position of continuing to learn. In other words, you don't ever want to get to the place. And this is my prayer for my life. I don't ever want to get to the place where I'm not continuing to learn. I'm not continuing to grow. I want to get to the place where I'm continuing to learn and continuing to grow so that I don't get stuck in just what I'll always be. But I want to continue to learn and grow. Now, if any of you have been tested positive for the coronavirus, don't panic. You, you remember what you've been confessing. Don't panic. All is well. All is well. Healing is alive. All is well. Now, if you've lost loved ones because of the coronavirus, man, my heart goes out to you. I pray for you. I love you. And if those people were born again and made Jesus Christ the Lord of their life, all is well. All is well. Uh, it, it's going to hurt for a minute. It's going to sting that sense of just pain and, and 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 a sense of grief, even though um, in Christ there is no loss. But I just want you to know that Tap and I care. We are we care about your hurts. We care about your your pain. We care about your loss of a loved one. And I'm not going to debate about you know this or that. I just want to say I, we care and we love you, and we 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 want you to have a quick recovery. We want the spirit of God to help you to recover in your heart. And uh, if you have loved ones that are in the hospital right now, we believe in God that the best is yet to come. We speak healing to, to your loved ones right now. We just everybody online. Let's just agree right now that anybody that's been hospitalized because of COVID-19, we speak healing right now that all is well, that the Holy Spirit will go into those hospitals and they will touch physical bodies, that there'll be no death in the name of Jesus, that they will live and not die, and they will live to declare the glory of God. Amen. Um, so um, I, I thank God for you. I, I love you guys so much. So let's let's get into our, our um, word for today. I'm going to be talking to you about, you know, your, your identity in Christ and and how important it is for you to identify with Christ Jesus and to know who you are in Christ and be careful not to allow 
anything else to define your identity. And that's going to be very, very, very important. So let's start. Let's establish ourselves in the Psalms 91, especially now. Keep speaking it. Keep saying it. And Jesus name. Psalms 91. Let's go. I declare that I will dwell in the secret place of the most high. I declare that I will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. I declare that God is my refuge and my fortress. I declare that you are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. I declare that God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I declare that I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. I declare that God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I declare that I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I declare that I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness nor any disaster that strikes at midday. I declare that because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil can befall me. No plague can come near my dwelling. I declare that God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me and my house. I declare that God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. I declare that because of God's love for me, I will call upon him and he will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears and he will honor me with his presence and power. I declare that he will reward me with long life and he will show me his salvation. You're set. You have set your divine protection and you are under the wings and the protection of God Almighty and all is well in Jesus name. All is well. Let's make these grace based confessions. It's important that you know who you are in Christ Jesus. My affiliation is first of all in Christ. My identity is first of all in Christ, identify with Christ first. Uh, Satan, since the beginning uh, in the Garden of Eden has always tried to attack your identity. And even when Jesus came on earth, he tried to attack your identity. Now we've got to be careful that we understand who we are first and foremost. I am a Christian first and foremost. And uh, my affiliation is in Christ. My identity is in Christ. First and foremost, that's primary, first and foremost. Now, I've got to be careful not to allow my party affiliations to define my identity, my religious affiliations to define my identity, my zodiac affiliations, you know, you're an Aquarius, you're a, a, a Pisces. No, you're a Christian. And, and that's important because if you're not careful, all of those other affiliations, they might distract you from who you are. And anytime you find yourself identifying more often with your other affiliations, uh, then you might want to back up a little bit and say, wait a minute, I'm a Christian first who happens to be this party affiliation. I'm a Christian first who happens to be a Baptist or a Methodist. Um, 
and about that other stuff, I just, you know, you, you're a Christian first. And I want I want people to focus in on, on that identity. I am in Christ. I am in Christ. So whenever you find that there are some things that are contradicting who you are in Christ, if if the things that you are affiliated with begin to contradict who you are in Christ, then, of course, you need to choose who you are in Christ first and above all of those other situations. And uh, that's something that's so important. I am in Christ. Everything about my life is is because of Jesus. And I will not allow other areas of my life to contradict or to impact or affect who I am in Christ. That's first and foremost. So as we make these grace based confessions, let them remind us that Jesus is the cornerstone. He is the center of my life. He's the center of what I believe. Anytime I say I believe something and it contradicts who I am in Christ Jesus, uh, man, I'd let it go. I don't care how smart it makes you sound. I would just let it go and focus on, well, Jesus, what do you think about this? Or what does the word have to say about that? Or or to look at it and, and to do it in context. In context uh, it's so important that we pay attention to the context of the scripture. Don't just take a verse and then take it out of its context and then use it to promote your or to support what you you say you agree with and stuff like that. Don't don't do that. Context is king. When you read the scripture, context is king. How do I define what that scripture means? I back up a couple of scriptures, uh, a couple of chapters, and I read the context until I get the context of what it's saying. And then the, every verse of scripture will be defined by the context that it is found in. And so a lot of disagreements that people are having is because they're reading scripture to support their idea or their way of thinking out of context. So let's respect the context of what the scripture says. Don't take it out of context and uh, choose what God has said in context over something that you might have heard or decided to agree with, but it contradicts the definition and the views of the Bible uh, in context. Context is king. Amen. So repeat after me. I am a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away. All things are new. My salvation is by grace through faith. As a born again Christian, I am no longer a sinner, but now in Christ, I am a saint. I am the righteousness of God. I am redeemed. I am sanctified. I believe in the finished works of Jesus. Everything that pertains to my life is finished because of Jesus. Jesus is enough for me and my house. Praise God. Jesus plus nothing is all I will ever need. I am made right with God because of my faith in Jesus, not because of my obedience to the law. I don't believe, or excuse me, I don't live a performance-based life. I live a faith-based life in the finished works of Christ. I declare that all my sins have been forgiven, past, present, and future. Jesus is my peace offering. Jesus is my sin offering. Jesus is my, is my ransom paid that I might have peace with God and freedom from sin. Because of Jesus, I have been made righteous. I am the righteousness of God by grace and faith in Jesus Christ. I'm redeemed now. I'm holy now. I'm sanctified now. I have wisdom now. I have been made whole because of Jesus. Jesus' body was broken so that I could be made whole. I am whole in Christ Jesus. I am the healed. I am the delivered. And I am the victorious one. Because of the finished works of Jesus, and the power of his broken body and shed blood. Because of Jesus, all is well with me and my house. 
Jesus is my success. Jesus is my peace. Jesus is my joy. Jesus is my everything. I believe in God's love for me. I can love others because God first loved me. My faith works because I believe in the love of God that God has for me. God loves me with a never ending, undying, unconditional love. God's love never fails. Therefore, I walk in by my faith in the love of God. I will not frustrate the grace of God. I will not fall from grace back into the performance of the law. I trust, have faith, and believe in Jesus and his finished works. I matter to God. He knows what I'm going through and wants to meet my every need. God remembers my sins no more. God loves me with all that he is and all that he has in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, I'm running a little over, but I got one more thing to share with you. Should I share it or should I just shut it down? Um, I got one more thing to share with you about attitudes. And I really want to share this. I know some of you are at work right now. Some of you are doing some things and I don't ever mean to, to hold you down, but you know, I, I think this will help you throughout the day. Let's just quickly look at this scripture, James chapter one, verse 21. He says, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Repeat this prayer after me, Lord, Help me step out of the sins and bad attitudes that have held me captive for so long. Help me know the right steps to take to remove these destructive and unworthy things from my life. You want me to be free and I desire to be free. With your help, I know I can permanently set free from these negative things, stepping out of them and pushing them so far away that I will never pick them up again. I pray this in Jesus name. Now let's go ahead and make confessions over this. Repeat after me. The word of God reveals those areas in my life that are unclean and that need to change. Rather than act like a victim who cannot do anything about myself or my circumstance, today I start the process of acknowledging my sin and removing these attitudes, actions, and sins that are unworthy of who I am today in Christ. I can be free. I will be free. I will be all that God intended for me to be. I declare this by faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I will see you tomorrow morning and uh, you're going to have a great day today. I love you dearly. God bless you. Let's continue to mature in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Bye bye.